This unit is sweeter than your first date. Hey guys and gals, welcome to Garage Gear. I'm JB, giving you the best tips and tricks to survive life in and out of the garage. Like many good tools here in the garage, there's a bit of a backstory with this Toro, so if you wanna jump right to the more details, I'll have a timestamp right here for you. Let me start off by saying this. For the longest time, I have been wanting to get my hands on one of these Toro walk-behind commercial mowers. I have been looking and looking and looking for a very long time. About a month ago, I was wandering around on Facebook Marketplace, and this Toro commercial 21-inch walk-behind mower popped up. I barely ever see these on there, and when they do pop up, they usually go for about $700 to $1,000. Asking price for this guy? 400 bucks. And here's the kicker, it was only 10 minutes away from my house. As soon as I saw it, I immediately messaged the owner. I go to see it right away, and as soon as I walk in his garage, I see a workbench, a couple of motorcycles, and a couple of lawnmowers. So I already know that this guy is a garage gearhead like me. His name was Michael. He had a really small corner lot, and I asked him, where did you get a Toro commercial mower from? He said his neighbor had it, and he put it at the end of the street for the trash. Michael went over and said, hey, can I have it? The neighbor said, yeah, but it doesn't run. He gave it a tune-up and got it purring like a kid. Michael then said he gave it to a relative to use, and then after a few years, that relative gave it back to him. So was it used commercially prior to the neighbor having it? Maybe. He gave me the grand tour of the mower, showing me everything on it, and let me rip it up and down the driveway a few times. I did all my checks, and this puppy, checks out. Since this mower was in such great shape, it was really hard to find something to knock the price down with. Everything was perfect on this machine. The only thing it needed was a blade. I said, hey, it needs a new blade. Would you take 375? And he took it. And let me tell you, this has been a satisfying purchase every single step of the way. And to help keep this video satisfied with the YouTube algorithm, would you mind taking a super quick second to hit that like button? Thank you. Okay, let's go over the details on this mower. The model number for this unit is 22176, and based on the serial number, I was able to track down an owner's manual online. It looks like this unit was built back in 2004, so that means this unit's almost 20 years old. I would have killed to have one of these for my landscaping business back then. This mower has an aluminum deck, and this deck surpasses most, if not all other decks out there. In my experience, this is the deck that all other companies should be trying to replicate, and Toro should be going back to. The engineers over at Toro absolutely got this deck right. It mulches up clippings underneath so well. The kickers underneath the deck re-divert the clippings back down into the blade so that way they can be further recycled into the lawn. Hence the name, Recycler. Other than your typical fence and landscape scuffs, this deck is overall in really good shape. The front bumper's in good shape, no cracks or holes in it. It's nice to see they weren't mowing rocks. The underside of the deck was a little pitted and barely had any paint on it. Rather than spend countless hours trying to repaint the underside, I decided to simply throw some slip plate on it and coated it that way so no grass sticks to it and it protects the surface. As I mentioned earlier, it needed a new blade. The other blade was pretty beat and might have been the original. So a new blade went on. Up top, the brains of the whole operation, the Kawasaki FJ180V engine. <laughs> These engines are designed to run eight hours a day, week after week. This engine isn't threatened by tall grass. It starts smooth and runs smooth. This engine has an oil filter, a fuel shutoff valve, and a one gallon gas tank. Incredible. There's an engine guard here up front, and this will protect your engine in case you slip it underneath some bushes or maybe some low branches. This also acts as a handle so you can lift the unit up. This engine starts up here with the choke lever. Choke it, pull it, and then set the throttle, and you're good to go. I love how we got all metal controls here for added durability. This unit rides on metal wheels that have ball bearings inside, and these wheels are two-sided, and you are able to replace them as if they're hubcaps on a car. Mine are a little scratched up, and these ones are a little bent. Not too hard to replace them. I really do wonder how this got so bent up. I wonder if they slammed it into a tree or something. These wheels all have a rubber tread on them, and they last and last. This unit comes with a three-speed, heavy-duty transmission, and you shift down down here on the back, and you can feel it lock into each gear. And this isn't a transmission that you find on a typical Toro Super Recycler or another model. A lot of those transmissions are built with plastic gears inside and are doomed to fail. This one is built solid and is good for many, many miles. There's also an adjustable knob on the back, and that allows you to throttle the speed of each gear a little bit. The handlebars on this unit are super heavy duty. You can feel how sturdy they are the minute you grab onto this thing. The cables coming up the handlebars are thicker, so that way they won't break as easily compared to the ones on residential models. This here is your classic drive bail system. Lift it up about halfway, pull the cord, and she's up and running. Then from there, all you have to do is pull it up all the way, and away she goes. To stop the back wheels from spinning, simply let the drive bail down about halfway, and the unit stops. To turn the whole unit off, simply 
let it go. Now to save yourself the learning curve, what can happen is you might let this bar down a little too far and the engine will start to die and then you'll pick it back up and then it'll re-engage the engine a little bit and then the transmission. So in order to alleviate that learning curve, what I did is I created this little yellow cheat strap here. I'm gonna slide this up over the handlebars and I ran the engine and I determined that this is exactly where the bar needs to be in order to keep the engine running but not the wheel spinning. So now what I can do from here is pull up to make my machine drive forward, let go when I have to make a turn, and then re-engage. And this way I don't have to worry about dropping this bar down too far and killing the engine by accident. Now stop. I already know that some people out there are gonna be like, yo JB, that ain't safe. That keeps the blade running. Well, I'm powered by common sense. And if I need to walk away from this unit for an extended period of time, all I gotta do is simply take this strap, slide it down over the cable, down the handlebar, and like that, I can let it all the way down. Not too complicated, just be safe with your unit if you're gonna do that. Now here's what I really like on this Toro 21 inch commercial walk behind. First off, this thing is cleaner than a nun's vocabulary. There's no dings, no dents, it's an incredible shape. The deck is designed so well, specifically for mulching. Deck suction is outstanding on this mower far better than any new mower lately. This thing is like a Dyson for your lawn. As you're mowing, you can physically see the grass being sucked up underneath the deck. I have areas of my lawn that tend to lay over a little bit, but this mower lifts them right up. Cut quality on this recycler is superb. Thanks to the perfect deck suction, the recycling blade, and the kickers, this guy goes to work mincing everything up. It leaves nothing behind except some really really nice stripes. There is a lot of metal on this unit and I will take metal over plastic any day. The wheels are solid metal, there's a metal belt guard underneath, the height adjusters are solid metal and they don't even budge once they're locked in, and all the controls and cables are metal. Now as you're mowing, this mower tracks dead on straight due to its heavy weight. It doesn't bounce at all and when you transition from the lawn to the sidewalk and then back to the parkway, it doesn't even lift up at all. It just rides right up and compared to residential mowers, they can really bounce or lift and then you end up missing that section of the grass when you're cutting. Speeds on this mower are basically like this. One is slow, two, medium, and three, fast. Three is basically a transport speed. Grip it and rip it, baby. The dial on the back does allow for some fine tuning, but I really like mowing in gear one. It may be slow, but it allows for the best suction from the deck. Two is good for a quick midweek mow when you just need to take a little bit off the top. And maintenance on this mower is incredibly easy. Everything is really accessible. Compared to residential mowers where you have panels covering everything, the carburetor is nice and accessible, the oil filter, the fuel lines, even oil changes are super quick. And let me tell you this, with that one gallon gas tank, I can mow my lawn three, four, maybe five times before I have to fill it up again. Now here's what grinds my gears with this Toro. This sucker is heavy, far heavier than any other mower I've ever had in this garage. I thought the John Deere JX85 that I used to have was heavy at maybe 125 pounds. This unit feels as if it's 150 plus pounds. It is far heavier. The new Super Recycler weighs 90 pounds. This is easily double that. Now you might say, JB, that's not a big deal, but if you have to push this thing up and down ramps, up and down driveways, and muscle this thing around into a tight spot on your trailer, that can be a pain with its heavy, heavy weight. But all that weight actually has a perk. As I mentioned earlier, it tracks straight and true. You simply set a line and it goes. This mower doesn't bounce at all either. It gives you a nice level cut. This unit is actually really difficult to turn around a big curve because of all that added weight. So you really have to rely on that transmission to do the work for you. This mower does have a slightly wobbly wheel here in the front. Not a big deal because I can easily change that out. There's also a small crack here in the air filter cover. Again, not a big deal and super inexpensive to replace it. This one's kind of odd. The handlebars are slightly crooked. The only way I could compensate with this was to offset the brackets on the bottom to make the handlebar closer to level. Before, they were really lopsided. I checked all the bolts and the hardware down at the bottom and everything seems fine. I think that the handlebars are just just wildly bent out of shape. Not a big deal, one bracket a little up, one bracket a little down, and we're good to go. Lastly, no bag. The previous owner did not have the bag for the unit. Wah, wah. That would have been nice to try out. I'm sure the deck suction would have been great. <laughs> to wrap this all up, this unit is sweeter than your first date. It's overbuilt, it's heavy duty, and it cuts great. These mowers kind of remind me of Toyota Tacomas. They just last and last, and they have awesome resale values because of that. So is this mower worth buying? For me, it's a yes. Brand new mowers nowadays are tapping into that $1,000 price point. And this commercial mower wasn't even half that, and it cuts two times better. For more cool garage gear content, click or tap the screen right here. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the garage.